Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of It's a Long Road, the Rambo Series podcast. I am your host, and with me, of course, is my co-host Dom. Dom, how you doing, brother? What's going on, Ryan? I'm good. How's everything? Things are going pretty good. Things are going okay. Good. Sort of a somber start to our episode. We'll get the somber mm. stuff out of the way first. It is our intention to finish the film today, but kind of like no joke <laughs> aside, we might not be able to because right. we have some things to talk about. We have some show notes, things to talk about. We have emails to read. We have Frank coverage galore to cover. And of then, course, of course. And then final moments of a Ramble 5, Last Blood. Um, mm-hmm. But first, before we get into the Ramble talk, of course, at the time of this recording, just over 24 hours ago, we got the news of Carl Weathers passing. And Dom, I would like to... Uh, Turn it over to you to hear your thoughts on on that news. Yeah, uh, I was driving home from work. I, I was stuck in some traffic, and I took a glance at my phone, which I, I shouldn't have probably done. But I saw that, and I was like, sure. oh, no. I was struck by that because especially – I think I was watching like a football game last week, and he was in like a, a fan duel, the betting app. He was in one of the commercials. Mm. And uh, he's, a, he's always a guy that he looks so good for his age. Mm-hmm. And he's always been so healthy and in such good shape. And I was like, ah, oh, man, it was it, it hit me hard. I immediately started contacting people that I knew to tell them, including you. I definitely I, you were probably sleeping. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I had to give yeah, you the to bad news to wake up to. But yeah, yeah man, I mean, past Rocky, uh, I, I mean, say what you want to say. And then I mean, we'll talk about some of the stuff he's done. No, no, you keep going. You keep going. I want oh, to hear your thoughts. I was just going to say past Rocky. I mean, he's like such a versatile actor. He did. Obviously, he was in Happy Gilmore which I right. grew up with. I watched that as a kid just as much as I watched like Rocky. His character in that movie has mm. always been with me. And he, uh, I, I didn't know, but recently I discovered he directed a lot of stuff too, like television shows. He directed a couple episodes, actually, The Mandalorian, which he was on. Right. But he also right. did a Law & Order episode, I think like Hawaii Five O, the reboot. In his older age, he was getting into directing a little bit more, which was cool to see. Action Jackson. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Of that movie, ridiculous movie. Oh man, I just love everything he's done, Carl Weathers. And uh, yeah, he's gonna be missed. He will be missed. And as most people know, I'm in the Middle East right now, serving my country, serving your guys' freedom. You're welcome. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the real hero around here. So just, Woo! You know, I am in the Middle East, I am on deployment right now in the Canadian military in Qatar, and my time is coming to an end here. I think the next time you and I record, actually, no, that's not true. We, we might have one more recording with me here. We might throw one in just before I leave. But anyways, the point is, I'm leaving here shortly, but I, I'm on a different time zone. Of course, all my family and friends live in North America. So I w- I woke up to the news on my phone. My phone was blown up with uh, messages from friends and family. And I thought somebody well, I thought somebody had died, but I thought somebody like close to me, like close to right, me had died. Right. And because it was like scary, I saw all these messages on message. Anyway, so of course it was crazy when I, I was like literally foggy eyed and scratching the crusties out of my eyes, and like still getting like <laughs> night vision to, to day vision reading. I'm like, what? No, this can't be right. Mm. But, you know, I'm going to speak more of this. I just want people to know that I will speak more to this on the Rocky podcast. So if you want, mm-hmm. check out the next episode of the Rocky podcast. I think it's going to be it actually will be Rocky Four episode one, if you can believe it. We actually our next episode covers we're covering Rocky Four, our season four. Awesome. We'll be right. So, yeah, funny enough, if we're covering the film where Apollo dies. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, I know it's weird. I know. So we're going to speak to that. So with my co-host, Katie and Kyle, I'm going to share my thoughts there as well. So I'll try my best not to repeat the people that listen to both podcasts. But go check that out if you want to hear more of my thoughts on Carl, of course, because his big moments in the Rocky films. Yeah, I was blown away. Uh, he's 76 years old. I shared a quick video message on, on my Facebook and uh, mm-hmm. YouTube as well. I gave, I gave a quick little tribute as best I could off the top of my head because I just wanted to share something while it's fresh in my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can check that out as well on my socials on the uh, Going the Distance or One More Round or whatever. You just, you'll just you see it. If you follow me on socials, you've seen it already. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, It was heartbreaking, of course, because it's a big icon of my youth, my childhood, and my adulthood. It's just a reminder that... Every one that we grew up watching, if you're in your 40s like me, I'm nearing 50, these guys are dying. They're going to have to die. Mm-hmm. They can't live to 120. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. the people we grew up watching, if they were full-grown adults when I'm watching them when I was 10 years old and I'm now nearing 50, well, right. do the math. Like, they're not going to stick around right. forever. It's heartbreaking. It's sad. But it's also like, I guess you could live to 96. That's possible. But at mm-hmm. some point, just like Apollo, he went out on top. You know, right. he went out think, on top. He went- right. I think you get so used to seeing... Because, you know, you watch these old movies over and over again. You get so used to seeing him as Apollo in his prime. And then obviously, you know, like I watched The Mandalorian. He's in it. He's older. 
but then it's just like it just hits you like oh man this guy's dead now <laughs> like, it John feels Hall, like because you get dude. so used to them in that young life filled performance but unfortunately yeah. Yeah, rest in peace to Carl. Love to his family and friends. So of course, the people actually close to him, the people that really should be mourning him. We mourn him as fans, but there are family and friends that are truly mourning his loss and departure. And uh, mm-hmm. we wish them comfort through these troubling times to lose their truly a loved one, a father, friend, husband. I don't know if he was married at the time. He's had he actually had three marriages. I, I mentioned, yeah, he was married three oh, times. Wow. You know, bless his heart. I don't know if he was married at the time of his passing, but he did die peacefully in his home or died in his home. So either he died peacefully or somebody strangled him. I'm not sure. But he died. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say he didn't die like Apollo Creed. Then he died peacefully. He didn't no. die humping the boxing ring. Dying. <laughs> Apparently, there was rumors that Dolph left his home shortly before his passing. I don't know if that's anything. We, this we is just, supposed to be exhibition. <laughs> okay, but our intention is to finish Rambo Last Blood. That is our intention, and I'm not even trying to be joking. So either we'll go like an hour, hour and a half. We'll try to get to the end, but we still have it's still like <laughs> 10 minutes of film left. I actually looked at how much film time. Try left. to get to the end. It's, it's crazy how much this drawn out <laughs> battle in the tunnels lasts for. It lasts a lot longer than, and we are watching the extended version. So he's got to kill a few more people, right? <laughs> he's got to kill a few more people. We are to get to it. So we're going to have more ramble coverage. Yes, we are using ramble last blood. It's just a reason to continue our ramble podcast, but <laughs> here's some news. So I, Dom messaged me after our last recording and I feel bad for Dom, and I feel bad he had to he had send me a <laughs> don't message. Feel, don't feel bad. For no, no, I feel a little bit bad, and I hope you don't mind me sharing. He kind of sent me, a, I would say it was a panic message, but it was pretty <laughs> pretty lengthy. <laughs> it was he's a like, panic message, no. He's like, I don't know if I want to do Vietnam films, because he's really keen on us doing the Mafia films. I know a lot of people, look, here's the thing. Everybody wants me to do my Western podcast. Everybody <laughs> wants us to do the Mafia films. Everybody wants us right. to do the Vietnam films. So we've got mixed not mixed, but everybody wants us to keep working together. I think it's the common denominator. Absolutely. But here's the thing. What we're going to be doing for the Ramble podcast, because this is truly a Ramble podcast, we're going to continue with the Frank coverage <laughs> as per the <laughs> Ramble podcast. So we'll be on this feed, but we're going to continue with the Ramble cartoons as much of them as we can that are available on YouTube. If the episode's not available on YouTube, I'm not buying the box set. I don't think Dom is. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll get through as many of them as we can, but we're going to treat the cartoons the same way we, as we have the films. So some episodes, we might not get through the whole 22-minute episode. It's, we're, going to, yeah. we're going to treat the cartoons with the same coverage, <laughs> exposition, and humor, I hope. I hope it'll be mm-hmm. funny, as we've done with the films. So if you guys are along for that ride, the Ramble lore and coverage will continue. So if you guys are cool with that, it's going to be Frank Stallone with the Ramble cartoons. And then when the Ramble cartoons end... Then we're going to go from there and investigate what we'll do from there. What a combination. (laughs) Yeah, you're going to get Frank Stallone and the Ramble cartoon. Until the Ramble cartoons end on YouTube. Like A lot of them are available on YouTube. I just don't know if all of them are available on YouTube. Unless there's some keen fan of our show that wants to send us the box set of the cartoons, we'll take it. Um, The Ramble coverage will continue for months to come. (laughs) Everyone's happy with that. Well, uh, we do have some emails, though. So keep the emails coming, folks. You can still say what your thoughts were about our coverage of Ramble, the films, because this is really coming to an end, the film coverage. And let us know what you think of the cartoon covers that we're going to endeavor on. Mm -hmm. This is from Donald, who's in our chat right now. He said, hey, uh, dear Ryan and Dom, I'm so glad I didn't miss your last episode. Well, there won't be one, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) It was a fake out to get viewers. (laughs) Because he says here, the old Frank episode was great trolling. Look, we didn't know it wasn't going to be our last episode. Every episode's potentially last episode of this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. We could be canceled at any time. Anyway, <laughs> we're hosted by Spotify. Our contract's coming up, just like Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got the same kind of numbers. We're trying to work the same numbers. Well, I say. think Spotify's paying us money to not do our <laughs> podcast. Not anymore. ever do a podcast together yeah. again. <laughs> Donald goes on to say, your Ramble podcast has been hilarious and informative, and I'll be sad to see it end. Well, it's not over yet. I'm looking forward to your Vietnam film coverage. Okay, so regarding this, <laughs> Don, maybe you explain. What are your feelings on the Vietnam films? Maybe just explain to people why you weren't keen on well, that. Well, I'll basically, this is important. It, truthfully, I think I'm going to lose my attention span a little bit doing Vietnam movies. I have, obviously, more of a connection to Rambo, Sylvester Sloan, 
Uh, we toyed around with some ideas, maybe some action movies where it's right. you know changing just to keep it fresh. But that's really where it comes from. Not, I, it's not that I'm against Vietnam movies or war movies. I think I'm going to lose interest. And I don't want to do that to you. And that's why I wanted to give you the heads up because I know myself. Oh, that's fair. I don't want to be doing it for a month and then be like, ah, I'm kind of getting bored. I don't want to bail on you or anything. So that's where. No, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And, mm-hmm. and I totally get that. I think a lot of our the fun that we have and the uh, combination we have is a bit of the fun that we have with this character Rambo. And, the, and I think the right. cartoons and the Frank will feed right. that beast. But you did say you would cover the odd film. So the odd Vietnam film that I do do will still mm-hmm. be on the Rambo feed. So you might see folks okay. a bonus episode like on this mm-hmm. feed. You'll just see Apocalypse Now with. Mm-hmm. So and so, I guess, host of another podcast. So mm-hmm. don't panic when that happens. Dom and I are still mm-hmm. going to be doing the Ramble and Frank coverage, but you will still see Vietnam films being covered by me and maybe even Dom in the future. But mm-hmm. that will, yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah, you just won't be doing it all the time. Okay. Right. That's the update there. I think we've tightened all the details on how this podcast feed will continue. Okay. So he just goes on to give us suggestions of different Vietnam films. So he basically asks, are you going to do strictly Vietnam films or anything that touches on it? Yes, anything that touches on it. Like Forrest Gump's a good example. There's a you know mm-hmm. there's a storyline in that that has Vietnam films. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely do those type of films too. Right. He goes since Last Blood deals with the Mexican drug cartel, and you said talk a little bit about the cartoon. I think you guys should watch the anti drug episode. Oh, so there's an anti drug episode, Ooh. and he sent us a link <laughs> for it. So definitely we're gonna get to it. my gold, my gold, Donald, and listeners is to do the cartoons in their tv broadcast order so we'll get to the drug episode for sure i don't know how serialized the cartoon is but i think actually the first season <laughs> actually does have a story arc. oh they there is an overarching I, story i okay, think there is an cool. overall st- from what i read on wikipedia it seems like the first five or six episodes is kind of like a mini series yeah it's about him getting the people that <laughs> i watched to rape somebody 50 times <laughs> I watched the first five minutes of the first episode. And I stopped. It's like, no, no, I got to do a watch long with right. it. It's going to be a watch long reaction. So you and I are going to watch it together and kind of do a watch long reaction. Full disclosure, I've never watched a full episode. So like I've Perfect. seen probably clips, but I've never sure. went down that rabbit hole. So I'm excited about and that. If I ever saw, oh, I did see the episodes as a kid because I was alive and well, like I was a 10 or 12 year old when that, when the cartoons came out, but I kind of stopped mm-hmm. watching cartoons, but I think out mm-hmm. of curiosity factor, I would watch the cartoon because it's Rambo, but I don't remember anything from them. So for those who are going to listen to our coverage of the cartoons, it's going to be a watch long reaction coverage and you, the viewer can watch us do that on your iTunes or on YouTube, it will be available on YouTube, so you can see what we're seeing. I think the, the fun will be YouTube. but mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. He says, keep punching. He says here, not to brag or admit guilt, or maybe put guilt on us, but he goes, I was the listener who originally posed the question, why exactly 50 times? <laughs> and boy, did, and he goes, and boy, did you guys run with it. <laughs> and he says, this final episode better get 50 likes and 50 comments. Well, that'd be great if we got 50 <laughs> listens. So that'd be fantastic. Mm, that'd be no. nice. The other uh, email we got was from Jack. Jack is the uh, host of the Drunk Bond podcast. He, it's mm. part of the last of the Action Heroes podcast network is the Drunk Bond podcast. He's uh, been in hiatus for a little bit because he had a baby this past year. So like old things, babies take away all our free time. Um, <laughs> he's going to be doing some new recordings are coming up. But just Google Drunk Bond podcast, last of the Action Heroes podcast network. You'll find all of his episodes on our network. He's awesome. I love Jack. He's such a cool guy. Well, I've done some co-hosting with him as well we did a few um chuck norris films on the last nice Nation podcast network yeah he's great he's a great co-host so he goes uh hey guys it's been a while since i've caught a few episodes i've simply been too busy listening to unwaxed <laughs> you know what he's referring to <laughs> no. unwaxed is the delone's daughter's podcast so. oh right right i knew it sounded familiar He goes, upon listening to the most recent couple episodes, my heart was instantly warmed to hear that there is someone out there doing God's work, highlighting the life of Frank Stallone. (laughs) For many years, I've been beating the Frank drum as I've discussed the beauty and wisdom of that man on my podcast. I've often said that without him, Rocky would basically look like a student film. That's so true. I mean, (laughs) we wouldn't have the Rocky film today if it wasn't for Frank. You know what I mean? Right. We wouldn't have the beautiful Take You Back musical number, Singing by the Fire. Yeah, by the trash cans. <laughs> he goes on to say, many moons ago, Ryan and I did a podcast on the Chuck Norris movie, the title of which I have since forgotten. He tries to guess it. Born the USA, Invasion of the Body Snatchers back in the USSR. <laughs> no, it was close, Jack. It was Invasion USA. Okay, There we go. Invasion. Oh, freaking awesome film. Man, that's a good film. <laughs> and on that episode, he goes, I asked Ryan if he followed Frank Stallone on Instagram. And, the, and he says here, and he said he did not, much to my astonishment. I told him... A, 
about one recent post where completely out of the blue, Frank was giving us his thoughts on illegal immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> his expertise on illegal immigrants. Oh, yeah. He says here, an area that he specializes in. He said that exactly. <laughs> Funny. He goes, I don't know if this is where Ryan's obsession with Frank's life began, but I've been taking credit for it and will continue to do so. <laughs> That's fine, Jack. Look, I've got Donald taking credit for the 50 rapes. <laughs> and now we've got Jack taking credit for our Frank coverage. I mean, basically, Dom and I, we, you know, we don't do anything original on our podcast. That's essentially <laughs> what, what it bounce to. He goes, uh, sadly, I had to start unfollowing Frank during his, quote, sing a song on my guitar every day by myself, sometimes bare chested, period. <laughs> <laughs> but he goes on to say, but I'm glad to hear that he's still plugging along. Yes, the explosion in the background of one of his videos made me spit out my coffee. <laughs> Same. Same. <laughs> PSS, next time I'm taking a vacation, I'll be sure and go spend a weekend in the Mayo Clinic upon Frank's suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, legit, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard anyone say. Jack, there you go. Might get a nice Thanks, shirt Jack. that says Mayo Clinic. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, where can we get a Mayo Clinic swag? That's what I want to know. <laughs> All right, so that's it for our emails. But are you ready for our next segment? Born ready. Here's another segment of Frank Stallone. Who is this guy? Okay, before we get to his Instagram video... Uh, we did get one more email, but it ties into our Frank segment here, where Simon, one of our faithful listeners and emailers, he found Frank's old rap record. I'll show it to you now. Oh, wow. It? I didn't even know he had yeah. a rap record. Remember he was wearing his rap outfit on that last uh, <laughs> yes, Frank song? Yes, Who is this guy? That's right. So Simon was able to find it in the uh, the $5 bin at Walmart. Here it is. <laughs> so there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of course. How could I forget Fat Back in a 45? I love that album. That's right. This is FWA. I assume that means Frank with Attitude. Is that what that yes, means? Yes, I'm FWA? thinking that's probably what it means. Okay, so it's FWA, Fat Back, and a 45. Is this parental advisory on this record. You, you, I'm not really surprised by that. Are you surprised by that? Or I mean, no. That's probably a lot of Frank cutting loose, though. He's he's going nuts. He's probably speaking his mind on a lot of different things. Okay, so I shared this photo cover on our podcast page on Facebook. Make sure you guys follow it. He didn't send us the track listing, so I just asked our listeners if, if they remember, because we, we all owned this back when we were teenagers, if you recall. I just asked our listeners if they remembered any of the titles of the CD, and I got some of the titles if you want to hear them. <laughs> so this was from uh, Jared, Jared Talkstein, who's the host of the 25 Guys Podcasting in the First Century podcast. He said here, uh, here's some of the... Uh, some of the tracks pushing there's a trump 2024 remix oh there you go <laughs> a big shadow sleeping in my brother's bed that's a deep one that's a deep that's cut, a deep cut. In my brother's yeah. bed. the stuff in the basement i don't want to know what's in <laughs> frank's basement oh this is one of my favorite tracks i gotta admit the riz of uncle frizz yeah that got a lot of radio play back in the that day. one did well that was one of his cleaner tracks i have to admit this came from Chris. Chris is one of our faithful listeners. He's amazing. He actually legit. He's one of our three listeners who actually legit look forward to our show. I think a lot of people just <laughs> listen because they have nothing else to do. He's got some more tracks here that he remembers. Uh, Dress like a mook. <laughs> Ain't no bums in my house. <laughs> this one caused a lot of controversy. Alt right said Fred. <laughs> Yo, my hair ain't Brillo. I think that one caused some controversy with, yeah. the, with the he was yeah. defending a lot of people were claiming he wore a wig yeah. and he had to yeah. come out and attack some people. Unmarried Bastard Blues. This was a good one. This was this one. <laughs> yeah. It was like hip hop with hip hop and bluegrass combined, I think is yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes, My spelling ain't great, but I'm a self made man. And then within mm -hmm. the title, it's actually great and made are spelled incorrectly. And I don't know if Frank <laughs> did it on purpose or if that was just <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell with him if it was intentional or not. Gee, I remembered a few tracks myself here. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember Fences Ain't Just for Horses. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember yeah. that one. Yeah. And then there was another pushing track. This was pushing. I think this is the original one. Pushing parentheses back to where they came from. <laughs> yeah, good. yeah. There's, there's at least, if I remember correctly, there's at least ten different versions of pushing on that yeah. album. 
He did an interesting rap version to it. For, you remember his song, there, there Are Two Kinds of Love from the uh, Rocky soundtrack? There are two yes. kinds of love yes. that you... Uh, well, apparently he did another song called There Are Two Kinds of Genders. Oh, actually, there are only uh, two kinds of genders. There are only right. two kinds of genders. Right. Yeah, Solidifying so those, that fact. Yeah. All right. Mm. Those are some great tracks from that. Mm-hmm. All right. So now we're going to go back to his Instagram and let's see what, what uh, Frank's been up to. I want to thank everybody that has gone to... Uh, UncleFranksBourbon.com and pre-ordered the bourbon. Okay. I kid you not. <laughs> I've had four different people reach out to me asking for help on how to order. I need help. <laughs> I oh, you haven't found it. You're the fifth <laughs> one. Oh, you haven't found it yet. I was Googling it and I couldn't find like the link for the purchase thing. <laughs> it's insane. He has a bourbon company and you can't find him if you Google it. <laughs> I've been meaning to text you and I kept forgetting. I was like, I gotta ask Ryan how to order this because I cannot find this thing. Just to help all of our listeners, because it's impossible to find them, write this down because I'm happy to help. And remember, this also ties into our invitation. Right now, I think Jack's gonna join us. I think Katie's gonna join us. We want people to join us for a taste testing episode live on the air. But the rules are you have to buy a bottle. Second rule is you have to open the bottle live on camera and do the taste testing and your opinion of that drink with us live on camera. And Dom and I will share a drink with everyone that listens to it with us or drinks with us on that episode. Right now we have two people. That's two more people than I thought would be doing it. But we invite everyone to join us with dates to be determined by the end of March, beginning of April. It gives a chance for everyone to order. It gives a ch- chance for Frank to send the orders. So write this down, everyone who's listening. I'm not even joking. You're the fifth person asking me, how do I find this? <laughs> I felt like and a I complete actually, idiot, honestly, because I was no, like, how can no, no, I no, find no. this link? This is what's ridiculous. I tagged Frank that I, that I did a pre-order. He doesn't like my photo. Doesn't like it. <laughs> People have literally already bought alcohol from him because of me mm-hmm. and our show. But, right. you know, Frank doesn't acknowledge me, so I'm going to get here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so this is the address. All it is is UncleFranksBourbon.com. Uncle Frank's, no apostrophe, of course. So it's Uncle, Uncle Frank's. Frank's Bourbon is B O. U R B O N dot com. Uncle Frank's bourbon dot com will take you directly to the site. The shipping may or may not still be free. They may have fixed it. So I would recommend ordering sooner than later because right now I didn't get charged for shipping because they didn't have it ready yet. I don't even know if I'm going to get it, but it's supposed to come. It's supposed to come. I paid for it. It took money out of my bank account. They better send it. Uncle Frank took your money already. You're welcome, Frank. I just gave the address that you didn't give on your Instagram. People in the comments, I'm not even joking, have asked Frank, how do I get your alcohol? And I've been answering on Frank's behalf in Instagram uh, for him. Wow. I've had five different people ask me how to get it, and I've been helping people on Frank's Instagram. And what does he do for me? Nothing. 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 And also our clothesline. Again, everything made in the United States. And also go to our uh, Instagram, Uncle Frank's Bourbon. And I want to thank my man, Paul Spatafora, former lightweight champion of the world, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh kid. He has a great book out called Fighting Till the End, and I'm wearing his warm-up suit, but I'm... More swag. More swag from his He just gets free friends. clothes. Man. Constantly. Every piece of wardrobe he owns is That's seems amazing. like somebody gave it to him. What an amazing deal this guy has with his friends. I, I wear the same shirt every episode. <laughs> same. Fortunately, I can't fight as good as Paul. I <laughs> never would. I want everyone to take... Yeah, he was the world champ in his class and wait. I like how Frank's like, oh, I can't fight. It's no, because you fought like a bum. You, you fought Geraldo, man. Your record's one and oh with Geraldo. Oh my god, take care. It's a weekend. Be safe. Don't be a fool. Don't take any wooden nickels and don't take any BS. Be good. God loves you. I'll never understand the wooden nickels thing. I guess I have to Google it. I, I guess there was probably a time in America's history where people try. It's like probably early counterfeit money. Right. It probably, probably. goes back to some cowboy shit, honestly. Right. <laughs> probably. Okay. So this next video, I'm just going to play it through. This was actually kind of legit. There's not really much to make fun of here, but believe it or not, we actually don't do the Frank segments to quote unquote make fun of Frank. We're actually only doing this. So people, we just want to keep on top of Frank's life. You want to know it. what Frank's doing. That's it. That's it. That's all it is. And so this is legit. He's actually skeet shooting here. And hmm. it's kind of hard to tell in the video. You might have to blow it up a little bit. I know the quality isn't very good when it gets on YouTube and stuff. But he legit hits the skeet. So I'll give him credit. So the, his buddy's going to shoot first. So there's a guy calling out the shots. You know, pull or whatever. Frank cocks his weapon, gets it ready. Guy pulls. Hmm. It's hard to see the one on the left. But he actually gets, I think, 80% of the pulls here. I think this would be fun to do. What do you think? Would you like to go skeet shooting one day? Yeah, sure. Why not? 
I'd like to go with Frank. <laughs> so he just got that one there. I mean, I guess if you just do it enough, it's the same kind of angle. Like, I guess at some point, you just shoot almost at the same time after the pole. So right. Frank pulls up his gun, gets ready to shoot. Guy yells, pole. Stuff comes out, boom, boom. Those weapons, they must scatter. Pelts must scatter. I think that helps with the uh, with hitting the target. Mm -hmm. You know, like a shotgun will right, scatter. It, it target. Right, right. Not to say he's not doing a good job shooting. I'm just saying, like, it's not like it's one bullet. It's like a scattering of shots. I okay. could be wrong. Maybe people could tell us if anyone here is a skeet shooter professional. The range officer or whatever calls the safe or whatever stopped firing. And they, there you go. That was it. That was some skeet shooting. So impressive. Yeah. Good morning, Frank here. Okay. Starting the Monday off at the gym with Alex. Easy workout. He did legs, few arm, little, little few arm movements, treadmill, out. Wednesday we'll come in, Tuesday we do something different. You don't have to do the same exercise. We did another one for arms <laughs> with the rope to uncurls this way. Different hits, different muscles. And also I wanted you to ask your opinion. I trimmed my beard. <laughs> so again with the Frank regime, you don't have to do the same exercise every day. You know, you do arms with the rope today. We'll do something different on Tuesday. You no know, treadmill, in and out. Boom, you're done. That's Just it. like that. We're in, we're out. That's it. That's all you got to do. In and out, that's all you got to do. What do you think of his beard trimming here? Shorter beard. He looks good. He looks good. He looks good, Frank. Now you can see my face a little bit. Now I don't look like Billy Bo Goat Gruff. So what do you think? <laughs> also. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the most obscure reference ever that nobody knows. Billy Goldgruff. Do you know who that is? I don't even know who that is, honestly. Isn't it like a fairy tale character? Billy Goldgruff? Gosh. Did he even say it right? <laughs> Couldn't at least say like Grizzly a... Adams or something. Like somebody like people maybe knew. <laughs> Billy Goldgruff. It's just a goat that has a beard along with like your typical <laughs> the beards with the goat. Yeah, the three. Okay. There's three of them. The three. Billy Goat's Gruff. That's the name of the children's uh, story. There you go. And they cross the troll bridge. I believe they cross the troll bridge or something like that. Mm. Yeah. And they have that long beard under their chin. So, yeah, it's a very obscure reference. I mean, <laughs> sure. Frank's bourbon coming your way. Go for it. Have a blessed day. Don't be nobody's fool. Don't be nobody's fool. He gets a little <laughs> gangster at the end of that. Don't yeah, be nobody's yeah. fool. That was on the rap album as well. I think that's how he opened the album. Oh, that's right. I think he did start with that. Don't be nobody's fool. And he, go, and he kicks in with pushing 2024 <laughs> uh, Trump. Again, he's plugging his bourbon. You're, and you're welcome, Frank. I just helped everyone how to get there. I really <laughs> hope people join us for the drinking thing. I, I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah, I, I didn't cool. think 100 people. I didn't, I didn't think 100 people would join us. But, you know, I, yeah, I was kind of hoping. Maybe yeah. five to ten people, but you know, we got time. We got time. I definitely got to get a cowboy hat for it. Something. Yeah, for sure. Oh, is this where he's making us pickled eggs? I believe this may be. And this is what I love about Frank. Well, he gives us life advice, number mm -hmm. one. He gives us exercise regimes and how to get fit, right? And now he's gonna give us some cooking. This is cooking with Frank Stallone. Let's check it out. Good morning, everybody. I gotta <laughs> tell you something. I grew up in a different era. I like pickled eggs. I like dill pickles. I like pickled pig's feet. Anything pickled. Now, if you haven't had pickled quail eggs, you haven't lived. I love how he's eating quail eggs. Of course, it has to be quail. We just get chicken <laughs> eggs. You know, I love how it has to be the quail egg. Like, uh, have you ever seen okay. pig's feet up close? Because like there's Yes, I have. I've seen yeah. them in the store. Yeah, they're part of my family who eats those, some of my relatives, and ugh. Oh, bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. <laughs> he's going to tell you how to make them, even though what he showed us there was actually a store-bought jar. <laughs> but, but he's going to tell you how to make them. Here we go. When I tell you, these little guys taste really good. Pickled pig's eggs. Pickled pig feet and pickled eggs. Very simple to make. Make some hard-boiled eggs, peel them. You got an empty jar that was a pickle jar filled with pickles. There's no more pickles. You put them in there, shake them up, let them set for a few days, and boy, you have a good treat on the run. Remember, <laughs> it ain't right if it ain't pickled. God bless you. Oh my he gosh. said you have a good treat on the run. What are you going to bring the jar of pickles with you? Like the jar of pickled eggs with you and start eating them while you're driving? I guess so. I guess that they're good to go. But he talked about a pickle jar with pickles in it with the eggs, pickles, pickles. I think he just, he just kept saying everything was pickled. Pickle jar, pickled pickles, pickled eggs. <laughs> Shake it up. He said, you shake it up, and then... Don't you put, like, vinegar in there or something? No, no. Frank no? just said, do I have to go back and tell you? <laughs> go 
he actually explains it very clearly here. Very yeah. simple to make. Make some hard-boiled eggs, peel them. Make some hard-boiled eggs, peel the eggs. Makes sense. So far, so good. You got an empty jar that was a pickle jar. Fill- so you have an empty jar that was a pickle jar. So I think the jar that's empty had to be a pickle jar before. So that's the key here. I think that's the key one you might have missed. Have a pickle jar that's empty that used to be a pickle jar. That's what he said. I'm assuming he's soaking them in pickle juice. Well, he doesn't say. He just says get an empty jar. <laughs> doesn't say Very much. Simple to make. make some hard-boiled eggs, peel them. He got an empty jar that was a pickle jar filled with pickles. There's no more pickles. <laughs> How many times did he say pickle in this video? <laughs> this is what he has said. Get an j- empty jar that was a pickle jar that has pickles with no more pickles. Okay, I might going crazy. Listen to that one more time. I just want to make sure I'm going to write this down properly. I want all of our listeners to write this down properly. I don't want anyone to be lost in this. Very simple to make. Make some hard-boiled eggs, peel them. You got an empty jar that was a pickle jar filled with pickles. There's no more pickles. You put them in there, shake them up. Empty jar that was a pickle jar with pickles that has no more pickles. Put the eggs in there and shake it up. I'm going to write this recipe down. And I'm going to post it. Pickled Still not going to make Frank's any list. sense, Ryan. Let them set for a few days, and boy, you have a good treat on the run. Remember, it ain't right if it ain't pickled. God bless you. Here's an yeah. idea. We need to make a T-shirt. It ain't right if it ain't pickled, and somehow get it to Frank, because <laughs> he'll wear that shirt 100%. Oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. It ain't right if it ain't pickled, Frank Stallone. <laughs> okay, this is great. This is great because we know how dedicated Frank is to working mm-hmm. out, right? And he leads by example. And of course. can we just send our thoughts and prayers to the people in LA? Of course. Thoughts and prayers. There they go. You know why? No, I don't know why. It's raining. It's raining in LA, Dom. And what I love is Frank's wearing his Uncle Frank's hoodie. Remember we, last episode he talked about the hoodie and how good mm-hmm. it is? He couldn't be more thrilled that he gets to show his swag and how it functions in this L.A. crazy weather <laughs> and how it allows him to still get to the gym. It's almost like God himself allowed it to rain so Frank could plug his gear here. Check it out. I don't want to hear any excuses for people not going to the gym. I'm 73 years old. It is raining. So he turned the camera to show the rain. <laughs> Dom, have you ever been in the rain? I have. Sometimes I work in the rain. <laughs> oh, you mean you still have to function when yeah, it's raining outside? Yeah, go to your car, go to work. <laughs> yeah. And you work in the rain. Don't you go outside and work, work in the rain? outside in the rain and get soaked? <laughs> well, Frank, not only is he wearing his hooded Uncle Frank's camouflage jacket, he's got an umbrella too. This guy ain't getting wet for no- nothing. No. But what he's saying to us, even though it's raining, Dom, he's going to the gym. So he doesn't want to hear any excuses from you no or nobody. Excuses. No, excuses. no excuses. If you're handicapped down to a wheelchair Nothing. or anything, doesn't hold up because he went out. No in excuses. Rain. And I love he's still wearing sunglasses. Like, okay, at some point, you don't have to wear them. <laughs> like, at some point, it's just not sunny. <laughs> you're outside, yes, but it's not sunny. He don't want to be recognized. That's why he's wearing the sunglasses. Come on. It's... He's wearing Uncle Frank's swag, okay? Like... <laughs> He literally has his name tag on his clothes. <laughs> Cats and dogs here in Los Angeles. And I'm here at the gym wearing my Uncle Frank's gear, ready to work out. So it comes down to your commitment. Are you willing to commit? If you're not, you're just basically pulling your own strings. You're just, you're not. Helping yourself. You can see how deep this water is. Okay, hey, you're pulling your old strings this way. I know, I know. He, he gets so distracted. He's talking about these big life saving moments, and, they, and they, he gets all excited when he sees a puddle. Like, he says how deep this water is. He's literally walking on a sidewalk. <laughs> Yes, Frank, you, you are 73 years old, and you're acting like you've never seen rain before. I would understand, not that I would ever understand this video, but let's say he was running in the rain, and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm jogging in the rain. But you're literally walking from your car into a building where you're dry. Yeah. <laughs> I know. He's walking from his car to the building. Yeah. But now he's going to show us how deep the puddle is. we got to see this. Just helping yourself. You can see how deep this water is. My feet are very high. Jesus. So, look at this. My feet are now soaking wet. <laughs> yes, because you just put your foot through the water. Like... 
But what a trooper. He's still going to the gym with wet feet, Dom. Can you believe this guy? No fat back for Frank. Uh, no fat back. That's right. Dedication to not getting that fat back. This is great. And it's cold, too. So get off your butt. Take care of business. So get off your butt and take care of business. Here's the thing. I love you, Frank. I love you, Tearly. I love your brother. Uh, look at Carl Weathers. He was in shape. Guess what happens? Right. He died. He still dies. Now, look, you live a longer life. Like, Frank's going to live longer probably than Carl did, to be honest with you. Like, Frank mm-hmm. does take care of himself. But, like, again, we have all this time just to keep going to the gym three to four hours a day or whatever it is to dedicate. I can't do everything, Frank. I can't go to the gym and cover your Instagram on my <laughs> on my show. Like, I would... <laughs> Thursday morning, raining you know, like cats and dogs in California. I just wanted to show off where I put it to use. My Uncle Frank's windbreaker and hood and hat. He's giving us another demonstration. This is demonstration video number two of how the hood works. Do you want to guess how the hood works, Dom, before he finishes? Do you I'm, want to guess take, I'm going out on the whim here, but I think you, you pull it over and then I think you tighten it. I'm not sure. Why is he still have the umbrella out? It stopped raining. <laughs> it's actually not raining right now. It's Right now, this photo he looks like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> really? Just now? I got in. Perfect. No problem. Right there. You can get it on UncleFranksBourbon.com. And again, like I stated earlier, no excuse. If you want to work out, get up. Alex and I were here early in the morning. Torrential rain. It stopped now for a few minutes. It stopped now for a few minutes. But I've got my umbrella just in case a raindrop comes down and I'm not ready for it. Like it. He's so afraid of rain, he has the umbrella out just in case it might rain on him. What's the point of that jacket? If you, what? <laughs> no, The jacket's obviously not good enough, is what he's saying. Is this jacket not waterproof? I guess not. <laughs> but you can do it. You're only going to get out of it what you put into it. Have a great day. God bless. Bye. Okay. All right. So now we're some somber moments. Are you ready? So Frank, like the rest of the world, gave his feelings on the passing of Carl Weather. So let's, you know, we got to keep our jokes aside here. We got to let Frank mourn his friend Carl. Let's see what Frank has to say about the passing of Carl Weathers here. Moment of silence. For me and you, let's have a moment of silence while Frank mm-hmm. expresses his. I was saddened to just hear that Carl Weathers passed away today at 76. Uh, I'd known Carl since Rocky One. And all through the other movies I did, I thought... Yeah, yeah, Rocky's one, thought, two, and three. I did. <laughs> all yeah, the movies no, I'm sorry. I did. Yeah. <laughs> like he d- did Rocky. Like he made- I really enjoyed doing those movies with uh, Carl Weathers where I shared absolutely zero scenes with him. <laughs> <laughs> and these are my gold records. You know, those behind me, I've got my uh, This is the End. But he was extraordinary in Rocky One. I thought he should have been nominated for Best Supporting Actor. And he had a good career. He was a good friend. And uh... when do you think the last time he talked to Carl as a friend? Yeah, I don't like when he said that good friend thing. I was like, he don't. He's not. There's no way he's friendly, friendly with him. So Carl really never did get nominated. That's pretty bad. I know Burgess Meredith, Talia, and and Sly got nominated. That is pretty bad that mm-hmm. Carl didn't get nominated. If you think he wasn't on there much more than the boxing scene, a couple of little scenes. That's true. It was Rocky too, where he really had right. screen time and dialogue compared to right, one. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the Stallone family were all saddened to hear that. He was taken too young. He was always in tip-top shape and he was a nice guy and I considered him a friend. Well, did he consider you a friend? <laughs> he, he, you know, I considered him a friend. He didn't consider me a friend. <laughs> no. Carl probably hasn't spoken to Frank since the 80s. Well, when you think about He's, it, like even even him and Sly had a little bit of a falling out that time. When yes. what were they doing? Was it Rocky Balboa? Yeah, that when time? Carl was asked, which is weird that Carl didn't give his permission to have his likeness shown in that film. That's weird that he didn't. I think Sylvester Sloan, if I recall correctly, called him Apollo Greed in an article I read. <laughs> yes, he did. He called him Apollo Greed. <laughs> I know. I know. And my condolences go out to uh, his family. I know he had a bunch of kids. Jeez. <laughs> a bunch of kids. I know. Uh, let me just say the vaguest things I can say about it. I know. I, I know. had a bunch of marriages. He had a bunch of kids. A bunch of marriages, a bunch of kids. <laughs> a bunch of child oh. support he had to pay. I think he had two kids. Is that a bunch? Is that, if I have two bananas on the table, I don't call it a bunch. 
<laughs> no, he got a couple of bananas. Yeah. Yeah, he had two children. He had two kids. <laughs> two. He had two kids. Some oh, fucking fuck friend you are, Frank. Yeah, some fucking I think friend. He just assumed, I think he just assumed that he... I won't say. I should. Is that a, is this I a can't. racial thing? Is I this... think it's a bad. <laughs> <He had> a... <laughs> That's what Frank's thinking. He must have. He must have a bunch of illegitimate children running around. <laughs> kids he hasn't seen in years. Obviously, kids pretty much all over the map. He hasn't seen in years. <laughs> he had that one kid that started the Creed film. <laughs> yeah. And the, and. The... Everyone in the Weathers family, my condolences goes out to. And uh, it's just a sad thing. So, folks, enjoy every day of your life and be thankful because you never know. And <laughs> it's like a threat. Like <laughs> he only Frank can make a eulogy funny. <laughs> His inability to say anything. Properly, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I gave an off the cuff eulogy on Carl Weathers, somebody who I've never met before. I think it was okay. Like it was just off the top of my top of my head. Like I'm not even in the industry or whatever. But his inability just to speak anything about Carl as a person. All he's told us right. is that I considered him a friend. He has a bunch of kids, and he was in the films that I did. You could tell, like he, because this came out quick. I think this might have been up before the other thing we're going to see after, but he saw Carl Weathers was dead and he took that as an opportunity. Like, I got to get on there and say something. Yeah, I, I got to strike with Aaron's hot to get some views <laughs> yeah. on my Instagram. No, that's exactly what he did. Carl <laughs> Weathers' body was still being zipped up in the even, body. I don't even think Carl Weathers pr was pronounced dead yet in this video came up. Frank was calling every day. Is he dead yet? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got the video recorded already. I'm going to put it up. Is he dead <laughs> yet? <laughs> Sad day for us. You know, sad day for us. Peace. Before we get to the next video, I just want to say we got a picture here. Of course, we see Sly here on camera. Those who uh, didn't hear, Sly did his own Instagram as well. So Sly couldn't be outdone by Frank. There's no way, right? If Frank's right. going to do it, Sly has to as well. Right. It went around the internet. As you know, it went around the internet. Did you happen to see it yet? I did, yeah. Okay. But there might be some listeners on, the, uh, on this podcast who didn't get a chance yet to hear Sly's eulogy or his video so we heard frank's frank's was very frank uh let's hear what sly had to say so we're going to play sly's instagram video here let's check it out hi uh, it's me sly stallone your good pal you know uh, all that fun stuff keep punching um today's not a fun day however today's a very sad day because we have lost the great uh, Carl Weathers, and he's a you know, good friend of mine, and he was prominent, absolutely, in uh, making Rocky, you know, and um, very sad. And I'll never forget the good times, you know, with, with Carl. And, and all the time, you know, he gave me my first title shot. You know, and he was always there for me. He always gave me a maybe I'm going to go the distance with the champ. I went the distance with the champ. But I'll never forget when, you know, he took me and in, and he brought me to his gym. He taught me how to be black. He taught me how to be black, and that was something that I could never do by myself because obviously, I mean, you see the pigment of my color, right? The skin color, the face. But Paolo always, he always, he always did things the way he wanted to do, them. and I didn't understand that. But maybe I understand that now. And, you know, I, you know I, I was there for him when he got beat to death in the ring by a Russian guy. And, and then he, we went to the gym. I do long before that, we sparred. And he was like, he was like, he was like he's like, you ready to start? And I was like, yeah, I'm ready to start. And he's like, dang, dang. And I'm just dying. And I'm just thinking, and then, and, then, you know, and then all of a sudden he's like, all of a sudden, I didn't want to go for a drive, and I, I couldn't find his legs. I was, I was like, I still can't go for a drive, I can't spar, you don't got any legs. But I, I just don't know what to do anymore. I lost him. I lost him. And, you know, I, he was always there for me. And that's just so hard about it. Wow, that was powerful. That was a... Uh... Very As Sly was so so shaken up by the the loss of Carl that he 
he started mixing up Carl. Yeah, I think he started Apollo, blending but... what was real. Yeah, I spoke about him dying already. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think it's one of those things where you laugh or cry. I'm just so overcome with emotion right now. I apologize. I think Sly and his grief, and maybe he's, he's a little bit older himself. It seems like he got the Apollo character mixed up with Carl. I think that, yeah. it's just like that happens with Stallone. People get Rock and Stallone mixed up. I think. Of course. Stallone, is, yeah. I think. Uh, TMZ. I, I hate that TMZ did this. I really do hate that TMZ yeah, did this. I think I this heard is about this. Cool. You heard about this? Okay. I heard have about you heard this. The- and you got to have boundaries, this- TMZ. You got to have boundaries. This is kind of gross. I hate sharing this on the channel. It's a quick clip. It's like five seconds long, but I, I right. hate sharing it. But since TMZ has already released it to the public, I just want to share it with our listeners that they were actually able to. I don't know how you were able to steal messages from people's phones, but I guess you could do that. So mm-hmm. once Sly heard about the passing of Carl, he actually sent Carl, I guess. The last voice message that Carl would ever receive uh, was five. I know it's freaking heartbreaking. It's, it's it. heartbreaking. It is. It, it's almost kind of gross, but I, mm. I don't know. TMZ's already done it. You guys make the call here. So this is the voicemail message that uh, Sly left Carl on his phone after his passing. There's so much more to do, Apollo. There's so much more to do. No. No. <laughs> I can't breathe. I can't breathe. That concludes another episode of Frank Stallone. Who is this guy? <laughs> Yeah, so Sly was obviously very distraught. I think at that point he was really confused about the passing of Carl. <laughs> he, he mixed up Carl's death with Apollo's death with Mickey's death. <laughs> I think, honestly, I think Sly needs to maybe go to the Mayo Clinic and get his head examined he might. at this point because <laughs> something's going on up there. <laughs> Here we go. So where we last left off, Rambo, remember he took out those people who fell on the spikes, and then he took yeah. them out with 100 yeah. rounds of ammo while they're on the okay. Just to make sure so, they're dead. So Rambo's now picked up another weapon, uh, another gun, and he's looking through the scopes here trying to find the last bad guy. Yo, ballroom days are over. And the bad guy sees the speaker. The, this is the main boss mm-hmm. guy. Sees the speaker where the doors is playing. So there's one of the Bluetooth mm-hmm. speakers there. I don't know how. How is the music going through that speaker, Dom? Like, I don't the know. I, not hooked up to anything. Yeah. <laughs> he had to have somebody from like Radio Shack or, or Best Buy or something come out there to do this for him. Because he played the cassette, and that's an old style speaker, you know, like they used right. to use in, the, uh, in the schools and the PA system. So, anyways, so Rambo oh. sees him. I forget the guy's name. The main bad guy sees him. And then the main bad guy sees Rambo. I think they see each other. So, so he's looking for he's looking for Rambo. He doesn't see him just yet. He's looking for him. Oh, he shoots the speaker. He takes out the music. I love it. All that music was going through one speaker? Just one okay. speaker. <laughs> oh, there uh. are some more bad guys. So this guy stepped on a, a, a some sort of nail footing trap. Yeah, that looked like it closed on his foot. Oh, like a bear trap. So Rambo shoots him. One of the other guys runs away. Uh, Oh, how did he die? What was that? Was that like a... Was that like a piece of a log or something? What was that? (laughs) You want to explain? Oh, Oh, what happened there? Okay, there's more deaths here that I forgot about. What happened to this guy? So this guy goes... That's a grenade. He trips on it, blows up. Okay, so he goes up by grenade. Oh, and that's his body parts flying everywhere. Cool. And this guy gets something in his face. This is like Hellraiser. <laughs> like, I don't... <laughs> what does he get in his face here? We have to go really slow here. I'm just gonna keep... What is that? <laughs> I don't even know. Is that like two knives? Look how his skull and face is split in half. Yeah, does that look like two blades? It is two, two swords or knives. One has. Taking out where the eyes are no, right, through his the head, the other one through his mouth. Right. 
Look at that free shot. Look at that free <laughs> shot there, folks. That's gross. Okay, so but I don't know what came out of the walls or where it came from. Mm-hmm. It's unclear. But he's dead. Now Ramble grabbed a pick a pickaxe. <laughs> oh, so this oh. is how this guy dies. Pickaxe to the gut. I think he's running out of bolts and running out of ammo. Now he's just going old school pickaxe to the gut. <laughs> It's a mining axe. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's very, uh, what do you call it? Very poetic. The very pickaxe you use to clear these tunnels. Yeah. He's now... killing you. What? He's... I didn't realize uh, there's that many more kills. Wait, how did oh that guy? What happened? God. What happened to that guy? <laughs> they don't even he's... explain it at this point. It just, no, he the stepped on something are... and he exploded. He stepped on something and he turned into ground beef. Okay, there's a lot more bad guys left than I anticipated. I forgot there's this many. This must be the extended version then. Mm-hmm. So the boss guy seeing all of his soldiers falling, of course, <laughs> turned to ground beef. So there's still three baddies here with laser weapons. How did these guys go? Oh, did he just cave them in? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Okay. So those three guys get buried by rubble. That's pretty clever. All right. Now is it just him? So oh, he's got hit. He's got hit in the gut. So Rambo is hit that in the powder. S- That's the same area where he got hit in Rambo three. I think so. He doesn't have time to do gunpowder right now, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's just the two of them now. What do you think? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He called. He called for him. Say, come on, come on, follow me through the tunnels. It is just him and him. Okay. So now bad guy's chasing Ramble through the tunnels. Ramble's just one step ahead, one curve ahead, leading him to the barn, I think. If I remember. Oh, he's got hit in the shoulder now. Ooh. Hey, after you saw all the booby traps that this guy planted, would you really chase after him at full speed like that? Yeah, what I love is how everything is. We can just assume that everything has been set at this point. He can freely mm-hmm. run through. Was it bad guy that turned off the lights, or was it Ramble that turned off the lights in the tunnels? I didn't catch it. Here, we got some dialogue, guys. So Ramble says they're all dead, so now he's talking to the main boss guy here. They're all dead. They're all dead. Apollo's dead. <laughs> Apollo's dead. Mickey's dead and Bert. <laughs> they're all dead. All of them. I could have killed you ten times. That's a little bit of a callback, of course, to the first mm-hmm. Ramble film. I could have killed them all. I'll give you a war you'll never forget. This is the callback to that. <laughs> He's, that's what we're seeing here. And I get it. It's kind of, it's almost too much. But what we're seeing is is his ability and his capability to do the war that people will never forget type thing. This right. is the war. But I wanted you left. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, dead man. <laughs> I want you to feel my rage. My hate. Now, just think about the Ramble character from the first film to this one. Mm. Do you see that character doing this way? I guess to some degree, I get it because the traps that he set for the cops were brutal. Right. They were brutal, and they were all non-lethal, but they were brutal. They you know through the legs and tied them to the tree, and he had the, his knife to the throat of Teasel, and he almost killed mm-hmm. him on the. A police station floor. This is kind of reversed in that he kills all these guys now and saves this guy for last, saying, "You know, I am now going to rip out your heart." And literally, well, and no spoilers. Maybe somebody hasn't seen the film yet. <laughs> Actually, that's true. Remember, we read the email. There's one guy who's watching this movie with us. Oh, never that's seen awesome! <laughs> that's awesome. Spoiler for that: our one listener who's listening to this podcast who's never seen the films parts four, <laughs> parts four and five. They only know it through our podcast. Is that weird? Like you did mine. You want to live? Follow the lights. Oh, so it wasn't the turn off the lights. Now he's saying you want to live, follow the lights. Mm. Well, that possibly couldn't be a trap. <laughs> I guess he's got no choice oh. now. Oh, because it's caving in on itself. Okay. Oh, that's right. He didn't tell the guy to follow them quickly. <laughs> <laughs> What if he just would have like got buried alive down there? You just would have saw Rambo just looking down, disappointed, like with his knife, just him not ripping out his heart. So this is pretty cool, though. We got some good CGI here of the land being imploded in. The tunnels are mm-hmm. collapsing, and 
And some good little action sequence here of the land basically being destroyed. It also shows you just how big the tunnels are, it, which is crazy that Rambo dug these tunnels out with that pickaxe. Isn't that kind of <laughs> insane to you? Like, yeah. where did he do with all the dirt? And no way. <laughs> where was it? Where was it excavated to? You know, did he have a dump truck? Did he have people helping him out? Did he rent equipment? So uh, he's in the barn now. The bad guy's in the barn. Now, remember earlier, folks, we saw Ramble practicing the bow and arrow with the cards. That's right. I wonder if that was a foreshadow of something that's coming up. So the bad guy is in here now. He's you know got dust in his mouth, and he's got some injuries from the blowing up of the tunnels. But he knows he's got to kill Ramble. He knows he can't leave this uh, situation without killing Ramble. There's no other choice. He's loading up his weapon again, trying to find Ramble, trying to figure out where he is. Can't see him anywhere. He's determined to shoot, determined to find him. He's got his back up against... The barn door where the cards were. I think this Should is where gay. they were. Oh, here we go. Okay, <laughs> one arrow in the shoulder. Arrow two in the other shoulder. Arrow three in the right thigh. Arrow four in the left thigh. And I'm just doing this for our listener who doesn't know the film. So now this guy's pinned up against the barn door with four arrow arrows and I'm exactly where the cards were. I love it. So he's pinned up against the barn door. He ain't going anywhere, Dom. Uh, he's trapped. Rambo drops the bow, walks to him slowly. As he screams in pain. This is a horror film. <laughs> this really is. Especially the silhouette, the shadow right there, him walking towards this, him. Yeah, that could be like Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers walking this way. <laughs> this knife, I believe, is called the Heartstopper. I think that was the mm. name of this knife by the guy that created the knife. Uh, what do you think that folks? knife's going to do, that Heartstopper? The Heartstopper. You see how he kind of shrugged his shoulders a little bit to get yeah. ready for this? He's, he's psyching himself up a little bit, getting ready. Get ready to do it. Walking ever so closer. Here we go. This is what it feels like. Look at his hair in the back there. <laughs> he looks great. <laughs> This is what it feels like. What might this feel like, Dom? Well, this is just kind of similar to getting raped 50 times and getting your fucking head cut off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing sur- open heart surgery. He just... Now, this this is really where it becomes like Hellraiser, though. Like a pinhead. Yeah, this is... Hellraiser, Pinhead, Saw, Jason Voorhees, <laughs> Saw, all rolled into one. <laughs> Can you imagine this? There it is. He shows it to him. Can you imagine? You remember that scene in the Temple of Doom? <laughs> <laughs> but could you imagine? You think about, and this is all leading up to this. Like, think about where First Blood is as a movie. How that movie I know. is. And then look at how the final frames end of this movie. <laughs> like he just cut a guy's heart out and he's holding it in front of him. You can understand why the author did not like this movie and bash this movie. <laughs> there he is, hold that heart. That's a big heart. I think I well, they say your heart is the size of a fist, right? That's a well, it's the size of your fist. And your brain, I think, is the size of your two fists, I think. Hmm. Give or take. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, that's a good point by Donald. I agree. He says, I don't care how unrealistic it is, but Rambo should have killed him with the letter opener that Gabby made for him. That would have been cool. The- so Buddy sees his heart, just lives long enough just to see his heart. Yeah, just to chest. see it in his hand. He's dead, Rambo. He's dead. <laughs> he takes one last look at his carnage. <laughs> just to make sure, you know. What's crazy is the cops will come here and see this carnage and death. They're going to go through these tunnels. They're going to see. There's that ramble horn. You hear that ramble horn? I lived in a world of death. (laughs) (laughs) It's just the ripping out the heart as much as I enjoy it. Like, you can't take anything serious anymore after, after you just cut out a guy's heart and showed it to him. 
But I love poetic ramble here. Yeah, he's thinking right. his thoughts as he's walking to his dad's rocking chair. These are the thoughts going through his head. Uh, I lived in a world of death, much of which I created. Yeah, I created my own world of death. <laughs> I lived in a world of death. I tried to come home, but I never really arrived. Get that, Dom? He's there mm. physically, but he's never really back home. <laughs> there is no home. He can never go back. <laughs> Part of my mind and soul got lost along the way, <laughs> but my heart was still here, where I was born. So this is the house he was born in. Mm. They've been here forever. Oh, you know, to be fair, maybe he started working in those tunnels before he went to Nam, bro. We know that's possible. Well, that would make more sense. Where I would defend to the end, and he did. The only mm. family I've ever known. <laughs> <laughs> I've ever known. No. All the ones I've loved are now ghosts. <laughs> but I will fight. <laughs> to keep what? their memories alive. It's just like the ramblings of, of him after he, he ripped out a heart. <laughs> he goes, I will fight to keep their memories alive forever. But they're all dead. There's no one left to fight. <laughs> so there's no one. I will fight. To keep their memories alive. At this point, he has to keep himself alive. He's the only one that holds these memories. <laughs> okay, so the camera pans out. Now, here's a little bit of trivia. In the movie original filming, I believe this is true. You can let me know if I'm wrong. In the original movie, the rocket chair stopped, but they CGI'd it to keep it rocking because they didn't want Rambo to look like he might have died. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, still rocking, which is interesting because we're going to see later here, there's going to be a scene of him riding off on the horse, which we'll get to, which I don't think everyone saw that. Apparently, that wasn't in everyone's version. That's why they kept the rocking here. So other people didn't see the horse part, which indicates that they wanted to show you that he was still alive. But they're going to definitely show you that he's still alive at the very least. What they go into now is it pans away, and I have to mute it for the music purposes, but it pans away, and we get to see some cool little uh, photo, 3D photo versions of the montage of the films. Remember the end of Rocky Five when they thought yes. that was the last Rocky yes. film? And we got the uh, Measure of a Man song. Elton with John, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is the Measure of a Man version for the Ramble film, which is ironically part five, is we get the same photo montage of the films where the mm-hmm. viewers reminded, remember when the films were good? <laughs> remember when the franchise was good donald goes i've never seen the horse i've always heard about it i thought it was fake so donald is going to see it for the first time on our podcast maybe we should just end it now we should just end it now so he doesn't get to see it so <laughs> now we're just seeing all the different scenes of ramble and first blood you know with the credits of, of the film that we have now uh, remember when I was in First remember? Blood and, and it was good? And remember when it was actually a good movie? <laughs> the shoe shot? We're at the shoe shot. <laughs> <laughs> now we're already in part two. Again, I'd recommend watching this on our YouTube if you haven't seen it because I don't know if this montage was shown in all the films. It must have been. It shows the montage, of course, of all the different classic moments in the films, the cutting of the face, mm-hmm. Rambo getting the POW out of the camp, co-dying. Co- Mm-hmm. Him in the mud. Him in the mud. Out of the mud. <laughs> yeah, classic scene. So him blowing up the bridge or the vehicles on the bridge with his bow and arrow. <laughs> the fire bombs. It's got to do sound effects. <laughs> now we have the stick fight moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stick fight. yeah, so he's got to save Troutman now. Afghanis that he saved and killed at the same time. So all the montages, which I find interesting, all the montages just sly. It's mm-hmm. just Sly as the Rambo Nobody character. else. Very, yeah. <laughs> Him on the horse with the Molotov mm-hmm. cocktail classic scene. Now we're at Rambo we 4. The noticeable difference in the size of his head here. <laughs> <laughs> Rambo forehead. Oh, yeah. This uh, returns the guy to hamburger uh, meat. Uh, and then they actually show the hamburger <laughs> meat scene. I love it. They should have showed him yelling about the raping. <laughs> and now he's coming home. Oh, you remember that film you just watched? Well, we're going to show you. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get a recap of that. Remember when she got raped? And remember killed? she got raped? And <laughs> remember when I broke that guy's collarbone? And remember when I got beaten up by the guys that raped? <laughs> remember when I saved her from being raped? <laughs> but then she died. <laughs> then she died. Remember when I potentially died on the rocking chair? 
You remember when I got on the horse and they didn't show this? You don't remember it because it's happening <laughs> right now. <laughs> you see, I didn't see this. I didn't see this in theater. People are going to see this for the first time. So if you're not watching this on YouTube, folks, I, I don't know how to help you here. That's right. Here he's on the rocking chair. Watch quickly. He's walking away from the go. rocking chair. Saddles the horse. There he goes. Grabs the there saddle. Go. And off he goes. I'm not dead. <laughs> Maybe Donald did see in the theater, but it was so quick because I even missed it. It is here. quick. Uh, yeah, it is quick. What's your theories? Is he um, alive or dead? I don't think Rambo's dead. I don't think Sly has the heart to kill Rambo. Or Then what's your fan fiction? Then? My fan fiction would be that he, he rides off and he goes somewhere similar to Burma and he starts his, his ferrying people around <laughs> business again. <laughs> he grows the long hair out again, starts rocking the okay, bandana so again. I have some legit fan fiction. Okay. He is going back to his people, the Native Americans. He's going off to the wilderness, the mountains, the woods. He goes off to be with the natives. And if there's a Rambo 6, he'll fight with the uh, Native Americans. He's living amongst yes. the Indians. That's right. I like He lives with his people because he's part, remember, he's part uh, right. G- German Indian. So and you so want to see Rambo 6. He's full-blown brown face, you want to see. Yeah. That's, what, he's That's yeah. what I'm taking away. <laughs> he puts on brown face. What would his Indian name be? Man who kills a lot. <laughs> Yeah, Chief uh, Heart Ripper. <laughs> Chief, Chief Heart, Heart Ripper. <laughs> there you go. That's it, folks. That is That's the end Rambo. of our... We finished it. We've done it. We've done it. We have done it. We have done the Rambo movies. If there was a perfect universe right now, we'd get off this podcast and then Sly would announce Rambo 6. <laughs> oh, man. That's amazing. <laughs> will Sly live long enough during our coverage of the cartoons? So the next episode will be... <laughs> that's, that's the question now. <laughs> Well, since I started the Rocky podcast, Burt Young and Carl have died. Now, oh, the Ramble, <laughs> Talia Shire is still alive, though. Next episode, folks, it's still going to be the Ramble Series podcast, it's gonna, but it's going to be called It's a Long Road, hyphen, Ramble Force of Freedom, episode one. Ooh. 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 Yeah, I can't wait for you to hear the guy's voice that plays Ramble. You know, <laughs> I'm excited. I don't even, I'm, not, I'm not even looking up anything. Don't look it. up anything. I literally no. watched the first five minutes. I'm like, no, we got to cover the cartoon <laughs> with the same determination coverage that we did. So that, that means it might take two or three episodes to get through one cartoon if everyone's mm-hmm. okay with that. Because they, they play out like the stories and the storylines and there's characters. So we got we got a lot to cover. All right. Well, that's it, man. Ramble. Fi- I'm, I'm sad. The Ramble film coverage is over unless we get a Ramble 6. But fear not, dear listener. Frank coverage will continue along with Ramble <laughs> cartoons, Force of Freedom. It's funny. We had some people stop watching our show live after we were done Frank. I'm not even joking. <laughs> when we stopped doing Frank, people dropped off live. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I, I think people watch Frank and not in the Ramble 5 coverage. Okay. With that, Dom, this episode's over. Nothing is over, Ryan. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. You asked me to co-host. I didn't ask you. Mm-hmm.